And uh, this is a case, obviously, in which uh, retaliation, if indeed it proves to be a terrorist incident, will be contemplated. But the usual course of events is it's an investigation. You know, unless someone steps forward, claims responsibility, the White House and other arms of the U.S. government will say, we have to determine who is responsible for this attack, try to pinpoint it. And then the U.S. usually says, someone is going to be made to pay. But that is a big if, if we can determine exactly the origin of this terrorist attack. And so there are some implications to that. Let's go back to Jim McLeshevsky. Bob, thank you. At the, at the Pentagon, Mick, you have more information? Well, Katie, Bob's exactly right. But uh, what, what their primary concern right now is protecting the American public in the New York area right now against any possible further attacks by the air. They have no indications there will be, uh, but th there is some concern that since this appeared to be such a highly coordinated attack, uh, that there may be other uh, terrorist attacks that could be uh, planned either in New York or elsewhere. This is absolutely the worst case scenario for the counterterrorist planners uh, because apparently, according to intelligence officials, there were no firm indications prior to this that anything like this could have happened. But in terms of scrambling the U.S. military, it would be for protection uh, for the time being and not necessarily even thinking right now about any kind of retaliation. All right, uh, David Gregory is now on the phone from Longbow Sarasota, Key, yeah. actually, where... But he's following uh, the president. That's right. David? Yes, Katie, the president is about to begin an education event, which is obviously uh, being canceled. The event will go forward insofar as the president, we expect momentarily, will come out and make a statement about this. Uh, he was made aware en route from his hotel uh, to this school here in Sarasota, where he was going to talk about education. He'll make a statement, then we're told by White House officials uh, that he will quickly depart for Washington. We uh, should mention, David, that New York City Airport or New York area airports have all been closed. The Lincoln Tunnel has been closed here in New York. While we're getting ready to listen to the president, let's go back to J J Jim McLeshevsky at the Pentagon. Jim, you talk about counterterrorist measures that are in place. Can you shed any light uh, for us on, on what kind of things are in place in the event of an attack of this nature? Well, Katie, it's very difficult to, uh, for the U.S. military to respond to this kind of thing uh, at, you know, right now because it's unclear exactly who's behind it uh, and if there are any other potential attacks or incidents like this because this has obviously not been officially declared a terrorist attack. But all the experts who are looking at these pictures say there's no doubt about it. This was a coordinated terrorist attack. But who and why is, is very much unclear right now. And the problem with trying to uh, then put planes in the air to try to uh, prevent any further attacks is uh, uh, these are, after all, open air spaces for the most part. Uh, and and uh, it's difficult for the U.S. military uh, to simply scramble jets and, and uh, uh, put them in the air. And, and then, according to officials here, then do what? Uh, this area, of course, uh, according to officials here, is, is obviously going to be declared off limits in terms of any air traffic. Uh, but uh, right now, officials here at the Pentagon are simply scrambling to find out first what happened right. and what potential reaction uh, the U.S. military could provide in terms of protection. Uh, possible further protection against any further potential attacks. And Mick, it's important to note that if these planes were hijacked, if they were carrying passengers, there isn't much that military officials could have done. You can't shoot down a plane like that for risk of the people on board, plus for the injuries you could cause on the ground in a place like Manhattan. Uh, we, th that's, go ahead. that's exactly right. And uh, uh, the president, as we said earlier, does in fact have the authority to scramble the military to put them up in some kind of force protection mode. The governor has the Air National Guard at his disposal. He can do that. But again, uh, officials are pretty much uh, wondering exactly what to do in terms of protection and how. Uh, again, uh, to the counterterrorist uh, terrorist officials, this is absolutely the worst case scenario uh, because uh, there right now seems okay. to be not much 
not much they can do in the in terms of the aftermath. Nick, Nick obviously, yeah, we're scrambling for information here. I would just want to read this Reuters wire that says two planes crashed into the towers of the World Trade Center on Tuesday morning, causing huge explosions and killing at least six people. CNBC TV said there were at least a thousand injured. Both towers of the lower Manhattan landmark where thousands of people work were the scenes of a bombing in 1993. The FBI told the Associated Press that it was, quote, foul play and not an accident. A person who answered the phone, that was reported by ABC, a person who answered the phone on the trading floor at interdealer broker Cantor Fitzgerald, located near the top of the World Trade Center, said, we're blanking dying when asked what was happening and hung up. There was screaming and yelling in the background and a follow-up call was not answered. Nick Fulton, an eyewitness, said just before the first explosion, he saw a plane fly over his apartment in the Soho district of Lower Manhattan. Jamie Gangel is on the telephone, our national correspondent, with more information. Jamie, what can you tell us? Katie, I've just spoken to top U.S. officials with the access to latest intelligence, and they said, quote, that this was clearly terrorist-related, no question about it. They said that they couldn't give any further details now, not because they didn't want to share it, but because they just don't know yet. They're at the earliest stages. So but do they know, Jamie, for for example, if a plane was in fact hijacked. They would not answer that, and I think that it's because, I think that they just are getting the earliest details at, and they're afraid of putting out misinformation. But they said, you know, that it was clearly terrorist related. All right, Jamie, thanks. We're looking again, if you're just joining us, as both towers of the World Trade Center in New York City, where two planes have crashed into the towers, one shortly before 9 o'clock Eastern Time, one shortly after 9 o'clock Eastern Time. And as you can see, the tower on the left was hit just above the midsection point. They're both 110 floors high, 1,300 feet above the ground. The tower on the right was hit more probably two-thirds to three-quarters of the way up the tower, but you can see fire, fires burning in both towers. We actually saw a videotape on, we watched the second tape or the second plane hit the building. You'll watch it enter from the right portion of the screen and then make contact with the left hand tower in what is shocking video. And here it comes right there. And you can see the impact on one side of the building and the residual damage coming out of another side of the building. And, and one can only imagine that that one occurred shortly after nine o'clock in the morning how many people were in the building at the time of the impact. And, and it's a large plane. We're told it was either a 737. Some reports that the first plane was a 757. Some kind of Airbus. That was what the United Worker told us. That apparently that had been, that it was an American Airlines plane that had been hijacked. hijacked from Boston to Los Angeles, but we're just getting initial reports of that. And again, we must tell you that we're trying to get as much information, but it is trickling in at a very slow pace. So all of this is unconfirmed. And of course, speculation of a terrorist attack is unconfirmed, although that is what some Pentagon official officials are saying. Let's go to President Bush right now. Unfortunately, we'll be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary of Rod Page and Lieutenant Governor <clears throat> will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at uh, Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families, and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now, if you join me in a moment of silence, May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. That, of course, was President Bush, who is in 
Florida in Longboat Key. He was speaking at an elementary school. He had planned to be talking about literacy. Obviously, he had to change. He mentioned that this is an apparent terrorist attack. He is traveling back to Washington. He said that he had spoken to the governor of New York as well as the vice president, that all the resources will be brought to bear by the federal government to determine who did this and who was responsible for this terrible, terrible event. And then, of course, it was followed by a moment of silence for the victims. We're going to go to Andrea Mitchell now, who has more information on this tragedy. Andrea? Matt and Katie, I've spoken to a top U.S. official who says that early reports to our intelligence community and to other officials within the administration are that this was a hijacked American Airlines plane en route from Boston to Los Angeles. One of the two planes, they say, was apparently a hijacked American Airlines plane. They caution that early reports still need further confirmation, but this is at least what the U.S.'s government is being told by American Airlines officials, apparently. Do we, they are assuming and have uh, obviously informed the president that this is a terror attack. And, Andrea, we have no information as to in what term of the flight this plane was taken over, how much warning that, that air traffic controllers may have had that, that someone hostile was at the controls of this plane? Exactly right. They had no other information, just that at least one of the two planes was hijacked from Boston en route to Los Angeles, uh, presumably after it had already uh, been in, in the air and en route, because I was told en route to Los Angeles. So probably hijacked after it had taken off. As you know, those are very short flights. Those are usually 737s or 757s on that route. Uh, but this clearly, according to the U.S. government, is a terror attack, uh, as you heard the president say. Now, one of the things, Matt and Katie, we should uh, understand is that there was no specific threat that the U.S. government is aware of, no specific terror alert other than the worldwide caution that had been reissued in recent days because of the strife in the Middle East, because of concerns over terrorists. Of course, the best known is Osama bin Laden, but no alert coming from his organization. And as far as they know, as of this morning, as of this minute, he is in Afghanistan. But, but as we should mention, Andrea, they, it appears that this was a well-coordinated uh, bombing or, or terrorist act because of the fact that two planes were used, both substantial in size, and the fact that they both hit the World Trade Center within 18 minutes of one another. Obviously, a lot of planning went into this attack. Let's and go to NBC's Jim Miklaszewski at the Pentagon now. Mick, what can you tell us? Matt, to add to what Andrea Mitchell just said, uh, senior military officials here at the Pentagon are saying they are getting information uh, that the uh, American Airlines Flight 11, uh, after it left Boston apparently, uh, uh, was hijacked and was diverted, apparently the early information was, was being diverted to JFK for some reason. Uh, and then, uh, uh, obviously, nobody knows exactly who was at the controls of the plane, but uh, it, it broke off uh, its route from uh, to Los Angeles uh, and was headed toward JFK. That was the initial information that uh, uh, officials had received uh, when, obviously, uh, it did not go to JFK, uh, but veered off and, and headed toward the World Trade Center. But again, no indication as to who may be responsible or who was at the controls of that plane when it uh, rammed into the World Trade Center, Matt. Nick, thank you. Uh, we're going to be obviously talking with you throughout the morning, but right now we want to talk with Larry Johnson, a terrorism expert, in fact, the former deputy director of the State Department's Office on Counterterrorism. Mr. Johnson, uh, can you please put this into some kind of perspective for us and, 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 and give us your insight on what might have happened here? Well, you know, first we need to be cautious before jumping to the conclusion that it's necessarily terrorism. I mean, I would be inclined based upon the preliminary reports we've seen to say that that's the case. But there's always the possibility that you may find out after the fact that this was some suicide pact for some reason that had nothing to do with politics. That said, this is a first. Um, back in 1992, there was a, a or excuse me, 93, uh, there was a Lufthansa plane hijacked from Germany, and it ended up landing in New York. And one of the concerns we had at that time was the possibility of that plane under the control of a hijacker uh, flying it into one of the buildings. Um, so. You know, uh, my concern now is that 
that there's always a, you know, we ignore terrorism. You know, we talk a lot about it, but we ignore taking very practical steps on security fronts until something like this happens. And then the pendulum swings out to an extreme.